Smart Planet TV. I'm Beth Smart. Today's story is about one of the largest mass strandings of pilot whales ever seen in Florida. It happened early one Saturday morning on a holiday weekend. Beachgoers looking for a day of sun and sand instead got quite a surprise to start their Labor Day weekend. On September 1st, 2012, 22 short fin pilot whales came ashore on Avalon Beach in Fort Pierce, Florida. The first calls came in around 8.40 in the morning. 22 pilot whales beached looked like a scene from a movie. This was all too real. During any stranding, one agency is put in charge. In this case, the Rescue League was Steve McCullough and his team from the Florida Atlantic University's Arbor Branch Oceanographic Institute. We're going to relocate all these animals in the next five or ten minutes up to uh, the beach units. I'm going to transport the Harbor Branch. The race was on to save as many whales as possible, and rescuers were up against challenging ocean tides, a ticking clock, and the blazing Florida heat. When an animal like this is on the beach, unable to relieve itself of this internal heat, they can literally cook from the inside out. Dolphins and whales, marine mammals, do not have sweat glands. The body temperature, core temperature, much like our own, around 99 degrees, is thermoregulated by being in the water. But when they're on the beach, these animals are very much at risk. Rescuers got two very lucky breaks that day. First, the National Marine Fisheries Service has jurisdiction over all marine mammals, and coordinator Blair Mays just happened to be very near Avalon Beach. That meant rescuers got potentially life-saving information much faster. The National Marine Fisheries Service stranding coordinator was able to go directly to the site and within 15 minutes give us the exact information, the number of whales, the type of whales, the environmental conditions, and the way that the public in the state park was responding at that time, as in any 911 emergency. The quicker that we respond, the better prepared we are, the better chances that animal has for survival. It's about 9 a.m., only 20 minutes since the first report came in to Arbor Branch, and experts are already getting some of the critical information they need in order to properly respond, care for, and transport these animals. When you step over that sand dune, no matter how many times you've done this type of response, when you see the magnitude of 22 animals, some of them weighing more than a ton and a half, spread out of a distance of three or 400 yards, and literally more than 100 people struggling to keep them wet and keep them shaded, you realize that you have to take control of that situation. So I need people to clear a pathway for me. I need to get up and buy those showers. I need to have access to my trucks. I need strong people to lift and move to help us relocate the animals. The veterinary team, led by Dr. Julie Goldstein, identifies which of the 22 animals can be saved. Animal ER on the beach, just like what you would go to when you went to a human hospital. And we had to identify the ones that were most critical and those would get our attention first, just like you would with a human. Because of the, the large number of whales, I brought a team together of some veterinarians and some animal handlers, and I assigned them each an animal, and we went down one by one, and we tagged each animal. So we identified the sex, identified if they were alive, and in just a general, quick, very brief exam to see what kind of condition, if they were still breathing, if struggling to breathe, etc. And so we had kind of an assembly line going down and we tagged each animal. So all the females got a pink tag and a number and all the males got a blue tag and a number. We realized that some of the animals were already dead and some were dying and others were suffering and need to be humanely euthanized. It's the toughest job that we face. And for a veterinarian whose sole job is to save life, to humanely euthanize an animal that's suffering is probably the toughest aspect of the job that we do. It's the absolute worst part of my job, but I understand that in many cases it's the most humane thing. Clear pathway right here. Where do you want that? I need a clear pathway right here. Take All the way that. down. Take down right there. As the veterinary assessments continued, the whales were being moved. It's important to remember that the animals initially stranded for a reason. They were either already sick, injured, or compromised in some way. To float an unhealthy mammal back out to sea in an attempt to release it back to the wild dramatically decreases its chance of surviving. When these whales initially stranded, there was a small surf one to three feet. They stranded on an incoming tide, and throughout the stranding event, the tide was going out. 
It made it difficult due to the wave action to manage the animals in the water. So while the tide was up, we tried to move the animals up onto the secure beachhead to provide shade for them, to make sure that they stayed upright and that their pectoral flippers and their tail flukes were protected from the sun and that they were kept wet. If sea conditions are favorable and there are no predators in the area, sometimes rescuers float the animals in the water to rest in their natural environment while they're being evaluated and treated. But in this case, there were predators, bull sharks and tiger sharks in the area that could pose a risk. Staying on the sand, shaded, and kept cool and wet was the best option. We took several juveniles, a few sub-adults, and a young calf, and immediately placed them in small inflatable portable pools filled them with water, supported them with stretchers, and kept them under shade to optimize their chances of survival in the rehabilitative environment. Moving whales anywhere from a few hundred pounds to more than a ton is not easy. The strongest volunteers are placed on each side of the carriers to lift them, carry them through the sand, and load into the marine mammal ambulances, waiting to take them to Arbor Branch. It's physically exhausting work and emotions run high as the clock ticks. It's now been several hours since the first report came in. All 22 whales were carefully evaluated and treated in the most humane way possible. The five healthiest young whales with the very best chance of survival are now on their way to Arbor Branch Critical Care Facility. Great job, everybody. We appreciate the help. We still have a lot of work to do at Arbor Branch and back at the beach. Want to help buy and protect Florida whales specialty license plate? That's the only money we have to do this work. Get serious. Good job, everybody. When we come back, what happens during transport? What treatment is in store for these sick pilot whales in their new home? And why did they strand in the first place? I'm Beth Smart. And the search for answers continues in our next segment of Smart Planet TV.